Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video we're continuing on with our exploration of Symphony 4, this time creating our first form. So we're going to create a simple contact form. We're going to capture the visitor's name and the date of birth and also a message and we'll also need their email address. I'm going to take whatever the information is that the visitor provides and then we're going to email a copy of it to ourselves via Gmail. I mean, you can use a different provider for your email services if you want and I'll show you a way of doing that along the way. And lastly, we'll show a nice little message to the end user to let them know that the message was sent. Now we're going to start by generating a new controller class. And as we've already covered how to do this, we're simply going to run the command. Now previously, we would have hit return here, but you can just pass in the name of the controller that you want. I'm going to call mine contact controller. Simple as that. Okay, so let's just open that up and do a quick bit of tidy up. So getting rid of the response that we don't want and also extending abstract controller instead of just controller. Now we covered all this earlier in the series, so I'm not going to go into it again, but that's roughly where we need to be at this point. Now, if you read the Symphony documentation, there is an example of creating a form right inside your controller action. I'd actually advise against doing this. I mean, even though you can in the real world, I can't think of any time that I actually would. It's a better choice, in my opinion at least, to create your forms in dedicated form classes. And these form classes always end with the suffix of type. Now I've never found out why that is. So if you know why we use the type suffix, then please do leave a comment and let me know. Now, as our form is for the purposes of contact, I'm going to go with the imaginative name of contact type for my form class name. And again, we're going to generate this. So get rid of that. Do a PHP bin console, do a make. You can see one of the options is to make a form. So we'll do just that. And I'm going with the name of contact type. All good, that should be everything that we need to generate. So let's start the real work. Okay, so we're gonna open up our contact type form. And I'm just gonna open up these use statements at the top because the first thing is that I want to get rid of this use app entity contact. So the generator kind of makes the assumption that we're gonna be working with an entity. And um, we're not we're not yet working with the database. So we're not working with entities. That's gonna come in the next series. We will actually be working with arrays. So you may have heard the word entity banded around, but you're not quite sure about what it means. Simply an entity from a very high level is just an object with some form of unique identification, or in other words, an ID property. And we're gonna get on to working with entities in the next series, as I say, so don't worry about that for the moment. So when I first started working with Symphony, in particular working with forms, I think the most confusing part was when I opened up a form or a contact type in this instance, is that we're working with a class, a PHP class, and not some HTML. Now the important thing to understand is that we define our forms in code. When we use a form in a Twig template, behind the scenes, Symphony's form component will take care of turning our form class into HTML for us. This means that we need to add all our form fields to the build form method and the form component is actually going to take care of the rest. So if we want a form field to be a simple text input, like our field name listed here, then all we need to do is provide the field's name. If we wanted a text area, then we would need to be a little bit more explicit, and we might need the text area type. Now, I strongly advise using an IDE like PHPStorm, as it's then going to go ahead and add in the correct use statement for any of the field types that you add in. just makes your life much easier. Get rid of that for the moment. So we're going to start off anyway by getting rid of that add field name and I'm going to add in the things that I care about. So the first thing that I care about is going to be the person's name and that's going to be the simple text type, the simple input. So I don't need to do anything there, but I could just have this as a text type. Now, essentially, those two are exactly the same. If you're not explicit about the type of field that you want, then it automatically assumes that you want a text type. And a text type is just going to render out in your HTML as a simple input. By providing a more explicit field type, you're going to gain some additional functionality. So for example, if we specified that our next field type, I'm just going to duplicate that line there with command D. I'm going to say the next one is going to be email. And get rid of that top one. And we can set this one to be email type. And what that's going to do is render out an import of type email. And that's going to ensure that some of the HTML5 validation is applied to that input so that when the user on the front end tries to submit it, if it doesn't look like an email, 
then it's not going to allow them to submit it. So for example, if it doesn't have the at symbol in it, then it's not going to allow them to submit it. This is a different type of validation. This is, as I say, HTML5 validation. It happens on the front end only and it can be bypassed. So you can't sort of rely on it to make sure that the data that's being submitted is absolutely 100% valid, but it's a really good starting point. Okay, we're also going to want to capture the user's date of birth. Now I'm using a camel case here. So I'm going to say date of birth because that is the convention that you would use when working with entities. So the properties on your entities would be in this camel case format. And so that's why I'm sticking to that inside this form field type. What this also means is that when data is posted into your form, it has to have the same form field names. Now this can be an issue if you're working on some more complicated projects and there are ways around this. It's a little bit more advanced, so I'm not gonna get into that too much. If you're interested at all, please leave a comment and I'll explain a bit further. It's gonna be a date time type. Now, because it's just a date of birth, we could have just gone with a simple date type, more than likely. However, in real world projects, I tend to work more with the date time object rather than just a date or just a time. I'm just showing you this because it's more the sort of thing that you will encounter in the real world. And so it's hopefully more useful to you. And lastly, we'll add in our message and we'll just set this to be a text area type. Now, Symfony is going to do interesting things with some of this information. For a start, it's going to create our form field labels from what we've passed in. So it's going to take a stab at what we meant by using, for example, where the capital letters start and so on to put in a space. And we'll see this in a moment. That's actually good enough for our contact type at this point, but it's not just going to miraculously show. We next need to do something from somewhere to make it show. So we created our contact controller. That's exactly where we're going to start the next step. Now, maybe I don't want to call this index anymore. Maybe contact would be a better name. It doesn't really matter. Go with what works for you. So our contact type is just a plain old PHP class. Yeah, it looks a little bit scary. It's got some defined methods. We're extending abstract type and whatnot, but it is at the end of the day, just a plain old PHP class. So in order to use that class, you may be thinking we need to create a new instance of it. So something like form equals new contact type. If I could spell something like that. However, we don't directly instantiate our form types inside our controller methods. So we don't actually want to do that. And in order to just tidy up a bit there, I'm going to remove that use statement that was automatically set up for me. So a couple of videos ago, when we first looked at twig, we saw that we could call this render. So we had this render and then we did some stuff. And then we had a way to get a response back that had our template turned from twig into some HTML. And if we had some variables, they were all put in nicely for us. I'm going to do something similar here. But the reason I want to cover this is that this render is a convenience method. And we, we looked at this when we switched out to use abstract controller. So if we follow that through, this takes us off to the controller trait. There's a bunch of things in here. And the one that's important to us now is called create form. So again, it's just a convenience method that's going to go ahead and correctly instantiate our form for us. We're going to need the form type and optionally any data and any options. Now we won't need to worry about these two. We just need to have our form type. So back in our controller class, the first thing that I'm going to do is create a new form. I'm going to say this create form and our form type is our contact type. So it's not a string. We're going to use contact type class and behind the scenes that special class syntax there is going to automatically expand out into the correct namespace, which would be app form contact type. So it would basically create the full string representation of our class name. As a heads up, as just shown, the second argument would be our data. Now, in this case, if you don't supply a second argument, it's going to implicitly get a null. What that means is the form is not going to have any data set. But if this was like a, if you would think about it, maybe it's your user profile and you might have a way to create a new profile. So that would have null as your data because there's no profile already existing. Then you may have the edit equivalent of the form and there is already your profile at that point. So you want to edit it. So the second argument that you were passing is your profile and that would then correctly repopulate the form for display. And so then you could start editing the existing data. Again, we'll come on to that in the next series. So for now, I'm just going to not set the second argument, which will just implicitly fall back to null. So the next thing that I'm going to do is create myself a new template. I need a template to be able to render my form into and twig comes with some helper functions for this. So on the templates, because we're in the contact controller, I'm going to create a new directory contact. And because we're in the contact method, I'm going to create a contact HTML.twig. Okay. Just like before 
we're going to extend the base, which means that we get all the nice styling. Then our content needs to be in block main. And again, remember to close off the block with M block. And I'm going to set up a new div. And in that div, I'm going to have three different functions. Form start. And I can pass in anything here. This is the, the form variable name. So I'm just going to call this R form. But quite frequently, you will see this as just form like so. I find that a little bit misleading. I'll explain why as we go through. So next one, we need form widget. And lastly, we need form end. Okay, this isn't going to work until we pass in a variable called our form. So the second argument to render will be our array of parameters. And we're going to have our form, which is going to be equal to form. Now, we also do need to create the form view here. But bear with me because for the moment I'm not going to do that. I've also not returned this render as these are two really common mistakes that I used to make all the time when I first started with Symfony. So I just want to show you what happens if you make these mistakes. So we've got our contact slash contact and that's just the path that we've just created to this template. Okay, so hopefully nothing new in terms of twig for you there. Right, what might be nice is if we add in a additional link to our nav bar. So let's do that before we get any further. So we've already got this another link. We'll just set this to be contact and we'll set up our new path. And I think it's just called contact. That looks good. Clear that off. I'm just going to do a PHP bin console debug router. Okay, so slash contact also looks good. Right, let's give that a refresh. Go to contact. And we can see argument one passed to the render block must be an instance of Symfony form view but we gave an instance of form. So it's a little bit strange. We didn't even try and return anything, and yet we're getting an error related to the way that our form is trying to render. Okay, so like I say, these are the things that sort of caught me out a lot. You see that? Make sure to create view. That should get rid of this error, and then it should complain now that we're not returning. Yeah, okay, so we should have already seen this if you've been following along with the course. Then what we want to do, return this render, and there we go. Now I've got some interesting things going on down here now. Aside from the fact that this form looks ugly as sin, we've got some translation problems and we also don't have a submit button. Also less sort of obvious is that the dates for our date of birth are not really that useful to us by default. But there are some nice things such as like the name, the email, date of birth. So as I mentioned, the, the spaces have been added in for the label based on where the capitals were. And if we just take a quick look at the source, whilst the source is a little bit ugly because we've got all these date of birth added in, you can see there's some interesting properties on each of these things, such as our text area has been set with a specific ID based on like the field name and the form name. These things have been set as required by default and so on. So there's quite a lot of interesting stuff happening there. And just before wrapping up this video, we're not quite done yet. But just to finish off the first part of the puzzle, what I'd like to do is add in my submit button here. Now it is possible, and this is a little bit sort of, I don't know if this is contentious or not, but it is possible to add in a button into your form type. And if you look on the Symphony docs, you can do this. So you could say add, and maybe we'll have the button called submit, and then we could have the submit type. And what this will do is if we just render our form now, renders out a submit button. Now this presents a bit of a problem. Firstly, I'm not too sure that a submit button is actually a form field. I don't think a button is a field, but yet it is a valid form field according to Symphony's form. So that feels a little bit odd. But secondly, the idea of extracting this contact type into its own form class is it's perhaps not that immediately obvious if we think about it as a contact type. But if you think about it as your profile type, like I've already mentioned, then if you have the submit button in your profile type and you want to add a new profile, then that submit button perhaps needs to have the label, the little button text of add or create or something like that, save, I don't know. Maybe save's a bit generic. But say you wanted to use the same form type for updating your profile. Well, maybe you want the button text then to say update or something like edit, something along those lines. So now what are you gonna do? Are you gonna pass in button text to your contact type depending on what type of form situation you're in? For me, that doesn't feel right. And if you follow the Symphony best practices, they actually suggest not putting buttons into your form types either. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to jump back into our contact twig template and just above the form end, we're going to manually define our own submit button. It's actually the recommended way as far as I'm aware. So to say input type of submit and we'll have a value in this instance of send something like that. I don't think it matters too much. 
I'll give it a refresh and cool we've got our button there and you can see some HTML5 validation kicking in so if we just fill that in next thing and let's just try that and I'll show you what I mean so you can see there it says please include the at symbol and that's because it knows it's an email type rather than just a plain old input okay anyway we're about halfway there with our implementation let's continue on in the very next video